Welcome to MET 200, uh, Manufacturing Processes and Material. This is the lecture nine. And this lecture, we will be talking about ceramic, glass, uh, graph, graphite, and diamond. Um, it, it is assumed that uh, metal is the most important material uh, for engineering application, uh, but it's interesting that uh, ceramic material are actually more abundant and uh, widely used. Uh, in this lecture, we will uh, add, cover uh, several other elements uh, related to ceramic, such as uh, graphite, uh, carbon, you know, and uh, diamond. Here is the um, chapter seven in this book. We try to cover this uh, chapter as much as uh, possible. Uh, we first start with the ceramic material. Uh, ceramic, actually, it's a wide-ranging group of materials. And um, the ingredient of these materials is, uh, it can be clay, feldspar, and some type of this uh, ceramic are uh, whiteware, refractory, um, glasses, or, you know, uh, some of the ceramic material. We have abrasive and cements. For the feldspar, it's a group of you no know, rock forming a tecto-silicate mineral, like um, this one. And the clay uh, actually contains a silicon, aluminum. It also includes a potassium compound, magnesium compound, and uh, calcium uh, uh, compound. In the uh, sand. Uh, like uh, here, uh, it can contain uh, silica, um, uh, feldspar, aluminum, potassium uh, silicate. Here in this slide, we see the structure of uh, ceramic material. Ceramics are a compound of metallic and non-metallic uh, elements. And the term ceramic, it comes from a Greek word. Um, uh, which is uh, keramis, and it means uh, potter clay. And the word uh, keramikus means, you know, clay products. And the earliest use of ceramic was uh, pottery and brick. And the uh, ceramic has been, you know, used for many years in the uh, uh, spark plug because uh, it's a good, you know, um, electrical insulator, as well as, you know, uh, has a uh, high uh, temperature strengths. This uh, slide, this picture shows the, uh, you know, the structure of uh, ceramic uh, crystal. It's um, uh, complex in terms of the structure. It, the type of bond we have in this um, uh, structure is uh, covalent and you know ionic. And it is much stronger than you know a metallic bond because of this uh, bond, um, the properties such as you know, hardness and thermal um, and electrical resist resistance are significantly higher than um, uh, those in the metal materials. And the glasses also considered in ceramic material, but um, they are distinguished because of their uh, non-crystalline you know, structure. Uh, the ceramic it can be defined as an inorganic uh, compound, which consists of, uh, as I said before, uh, a metal. It can be semi-metal as well as one uh, non-metal. Uh, some of the important examples are here for you. Um, silica, another name for silica is silicon uh, oxide, SiO2. And this is the main ingredient in you know, most uh, glass product. Another example of ceramic is uh, alumina or aluminum oxide, Al2O2O3. And uh, it uh, has a lot of application in abrasive as, uh, as well as um, artificial you know, bones. And more complex compound of uh, ceramic can be 
uh, hydrous aluminum uh, silica, which is this one. And this is the main um, ingredient in most uh, clay products. We have uh, three different uh, category of ceramic. One is called, you know, traditional ceramic, where we have clay products such as, you know, whiteware, uh, uh, whiteware pottery, the brick, uh, uh, some abrasive material, abrasive, you know, wheels and cement. These are called, you know, traditional ceramic. And then we have new ceramic or also uh, industrial ceramic um, and it's mostly uh, used uh, as a, based on oxide and carbides and they have a better you know uh, mechanical and physical property comparing with the traditional ceramics and then we have glasses the glasses are as I said before it's a uh, distinguished from the uh, ceramic because of their structure. They have a non-crystal structure. The first category, as I mentioned in the previous slide, is traditional ceramic. And the traditional ceramic are based on the mineral silicate, which is a silica, one example, as well as other mineral oxide that can be found in the nature. The primary product of the traditional ceramic is fired clay, uh, one example pottery, as well as you know tableware, brick, and you know the, the tile. Also, we have natural abrasive in the traditional ceramic, which is aluminum. And the uh, traditional ceramic has a long story. It can be back to thousands of years ago. The last point, the last fact about this um, uh, ceramic is that uh, sometimes we include uh, glass in the traditional ceramic and the glass is, uh, is a silicate ceramic material. In the, the ceramic material, we have an interesting mechanical property. For example, here, uh, this is aluminum oxide. It shows the transverse rupture, the, the rupture in the strengths, as well as the rupture uh, strengths in the, the compressor. So the strength in tension is one order of the magnitude lower than compressive strengths. This is mostly uh, because of the Sleep. You know, in the we have the type of bonding in ceramic, and it is more rigid and does not allow a slip under um, a stress. We have a structure like this. This is the metal. When we apply external force, the crystal lattice will glide along each other. They become like this. So they, they change their uh, crystal arrangement. But we, we do not see this type of you know, uh, changing in the crystal direction when we are working with a, a ceramic material. So the inability to sleep makes it more difficult for ceramic to absorb a stress. So when we apply um, this type of you know, uh, loading external force, because we won't be able to see this you know, deformation suddenly we will have um, a rupture if, when the part is in a tensile uh, type of load. Let's look at this uh, physical property of uh, ceramics. The density of uh, ceramic first, the, uh, the ceramics are lighter than you know, metals, but uh, if we compare them with the polymer, they are heavier 
and they have a high melting point uh, once we compare it with metal and sometimes you know they decompose rather than you know melt and they have a lower um, melt lower you know thermal uh, and electrical conductivity um, comparing with the metals but the the range of value are greater sometimes you know ceramics are insulator but some of the ceramic can be used as a conductor this is interesting so they can be used as a um, insulator as well as you know conductor and they have um, less uh, lower thermal expansion coefficient comparing with the metal but the effect of you know uh, thermal expansion in the ceramic are more damaging because of you know their um, brittleness so they are very brittle even uh, a small uh, deformation in the ceramic can cause you know a uh, rupture in the inside the ceramic material and then uh, another, the last point is some of the ceramic are translucent the window glass is one of them which is based on silica this uh, table it compares the property of metal and ceramic um, first is the shows the crystal the structure in metal we have a crystal structure which is the same uh, thing in the ceramic uh, but in terms of no electron we have a large number of free, free electron in metal but in the ceramic because of the type of no bond we have captive electro electron the type of bond in the metal is a metallic in the ceramic it's a ionic and covalent bond and the uh, uh, conductivity electrical conductivity in metal is good it's well known and the uh, ceramic has a poor you know, conductivity if we compare it with the uh, metal and the ceramic are um, transparent but in the metal uh, it's um, opaque and we have uh, uniform you uh, know atom uh, sizes but here uh, atom sizes are different it can be large but some of them can be a small and then if we have poor tensile strengths uh, here we have high tensile strengths high shear um, strengths is uh, another property of ceramic but in the um, in the metal we have low shear strengths um, ceramic they are brittle, they are not you know, um, ductile uh, material, but in metal they are well known for their uh, ductility. We don't have a plastic flow in ceramic, but we have a good plastic flow when uh, the material is in tension. We have a good um, impact strength in the metal but the impact strength in the ceramic is very low because they are uh, the ceramics are brittle again and they have a high weight they are a dense material they are you know heavy but in ceramic if we compare it with metal uh, they have a lower weight lower density the hardness of the uh, metals are lower than the um, uh, ceramics ceramics are very hard material and they have um, high density and uh, in the metal but in the ceramic we have low density as you mentioned here because of the low density the weight is going to be lower than the metal let's look at the ceramic products uh, one of them is clay construction product for example brick and clay pipe and building tile and also we have refractory you know ceramic the refractory ceramic are capable of high temperature application uh, for example furnace wall crucible and mold and also the cement is uh, another ceramic product cement the, the, the material we use in concrete uh, and we use in construction and roads the white uh, products which is called you know, fine china 
uh, or propylene, and they are uh, ceramic material. The next uh, ceramic products are whiteware, uh, crockery, uh, floor, uh, white tiles are some of them, electrical, uh, propylene, and decorative ceramic, um, such as those you know, shown in this picture. Uh, actually, ceramic has a lot of application in electrical transmission component, also in the computer industry. Uh, you can make a wafer. Uh, wafer is a circular, you know, uh, this uh, made of, you know, uh, ceramic material. And then um, in the semiconductor industry, then they uh, divide, you know, uh, they cut this, uh, you know, wafer to a smaller piece. Then this uh, smaller piece, this, um, for example, the rectangle is going to be substrate and uh, other component or computer component is going to be um, uh, mounted onto this uh, part. The, the ceramic has uh, also uh, application in nuclear fuel uh, based on the uranium oxide. Um, you, we use it in the you know, artificial teeth and bones. Uh, we use this uh, ceramic in the thermal insula insulating, you know, wool, uh, reinforced, you know, plastic, fiberglass. Also, we use the ceramic in aluminum oxide as an abrasive material, silicon carbide in grinding wheel. Also, we use the ceramic product in the cutting tool material, such as um, tungsten carbide and uh, cubic boron you know, nitride. It is also um, well known that we use cement um, to produce you know, concrete roads and bridge and building. So the cement is another uh, metal uh, type of uh, ceramic material. Uh, this uh, table shows the general characteristic and principal use of ceramic. Uh, we have um, three type oxide you know, ceramic, we have carbide and then we have a uh, nitride and each one has a, its, its own a specific um, characteristic and use for example oxide the ceramic this category has a high hardness and moderate uh, strengths and uh, they have a high toughness uh, the thermal expansion coefficient is close to cast iron and it's uh, suitable for high temperature application uh, such as you know uh, furnace jet engine component and the carbide has a good hardness as in strength and wear resistance uh, they can be used as a die and you know uh, cutting tool also they have a high temperature strength and wear resistance they are used as a heat engine as well as a abrasive in grinding wheel in the nitrite which is the second hardest uh, substance known uh, after diamond, are used as abrasive and uh, cutting tool. Their color are you know, gold. They can be used as a coating uh, because of their uh, low frictional uh, characteristics. Also, this material can be used as a cutting tool as well as you know, feed the tubes. There are other material in this uh, table. Um, we want to pick some of them, uh, but you can read you know, this um, information later. Uh, we have uh, graphite and diamond in the ceramic uh, material. The diamond is the uh, hardest substance. Um, that we know. Uh, it's available in single crystal and polycrystal form and they are used as a you know, uh, cutting tool and abrasive in the dye and uh, for drawing fine uh, wire. Uh, graphite is a crystal um, form of uh, carbon 
and it has a high electrical and thermal conductivity. It can be used as a good thermal shock. And um, we have carbon nanotube, which is a unique crystalline uh, form of uh, graphite. It has a good um, thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity. And the last one is a nanophase uh, ceramic, which is stronger and easier to fabricate and machine uh, compared with the um, uh, conventional ceramic. It's used in the automotive and um, aerospace uh, in ap application. Let's look at the glass. Glass is a amorphous ceramic material. Actually, it's a ceramic material. Um, and we can you know, produce a glass when we uh, cool the ceramic material um, so quick. So then we won't allow to form you know crystal structure. If you cool it you know, slowly, then it will um, form a crystal structure. But if you cool it you know, rapidly, then it doesn't have time to form a crystal structure. Then it will form a amorphous structure. And it will consist of disorder and the linked you know, chain of silicon and oxygen atom, as you see in this um, structure. And this is the main reason for its uh, transparency as uh, the crystal structure and crystal boundaries uh, scatter the light and it causes uh, reflection. And the glass can be tempered to increase the toughness and the resistance to uh, cracking. Uh, one of the uh, very well-known uh, ceramic uh, glass material is a pure silica, is SiO2. In the glass, we have a lot of you know, SiO2 or you know um, silica. Um, why is that? The, the main reason is that it's a good um, uh, glass former. We have other material, um, but normally other ceramic are not a good um, glass former. So when we cool it down, even you know uh, quick, they tend to crystallize uh, during solidification. But um, Si2 uh, silica or SiO2 is a um, good you know glass former we have other you know material uh, in the glass uh, for example sodium oxide calcium oxide aluminum oxide are some of them we have a uh, different uh, type of you know, glasses available in the market uh, one is a window glass the uh, other one is a container, jars, bottles. They have different composition um, because of you know, their uh, uh, applications. So they have to have uh, different characteristics. And uh, light bulbs, uh, we have beaker in the laboratory, you know, glassware, uh, glass fiber that are using insulation and fiber optics. And we have uh, optical glasses. And their properties are summarized here. Uh, for example, what is the density of the uh, lime glass, the how, how is uh, its uh, strength, electrical resistivity, you know, heat uh, treatability, um, as well as the cost are summarized in this uh, table. I have a video that shows how the uh, glass is made, but I cannot you know, play here in this uh, presentation. Um, the, if I do it, then uh, with the YouTube because the video was uh, in the YouTube then um, due to the copyright um, YouTube will block my presentation because it has some part of the video that was already in the, the YouTube so I don't want to play here I will uh, post the uh, link in the blackboard so you, if you are interested you can see the video and uh, get some idea how the glass is going to be be made but this is the you know uh, schematic of uh, the glass production. The, the composition is going to be made, and then um, 
it's going to be heated up to a certain temperature, then it's called an OGOP. If you have a molten uh, state of the matter, then it will be uh, settled in the, the mold. And then the plunger, it has a certain you know, the desired shape. Uh, it's going to descend after some time. Uh, when it's pressed, uh, the, the molten you know, um, uh, glass or the gob will pick up the shape of the uh, plunger. This is the finished product. Let's look at the properties of glass. Glass are uh, uh, similar to ceramic generally, and they have um, uh, brittle, they are brittle material. Uh, the uh, modulus of elasticity or young modulus is um, between 55 and 90 uh, gigapascal. Um, you remember the uh, young modulus of the metal a steel a steel the young modulus is about 200 gigapascal right g p a and for aluminum uh, it is uh, between 70 and 80 and the portion ratio uh, for this glass is between 0.16 and 0.28. Uh, if we consider this one, it's very low compared to portion ratio of a steel, which is 0.3. And the uh, glasses are characteristic by their uh, low thermal conductivity and high electrical resistivity. And the uh, thermal expansion coefficient, remember that. Uh, thermal expansion coefficient of uh, glasses are uh, is very low sometimes it is uh, zero and they have a very they are very resistant to a chemical attack and they are used in the you know, uh, chemical laboratory um, for uh, carrying acids and um, they um, they have a good resistance also um, against the corrosion. Uh, the next material is called uh, ceramic, uh, glass ceramic. ceramic. Glass ceramic is a type of uh, ceramic material that is produced by conversion of a glass into polycrystal structure through heat treatment. The proportion of crystal uh, phase ranges between 90 to 98%. And the grain size is uh, smaller than the conventional uh, ceramic. And we have um, um, the actually glass uh, ceramic are uh, opaque. You know, they are not uh, clear um, when we compare it with the you know, glass material, which are very Some of the advantages of uh, glass ceramics are um, stated here. Uh, they have a good efficiency of um, processing in the glassy state, so it can be uh, processed easier. Uh, they have a close uh, dimension control over the final shape. They have a good mechanical and physical property. They have a higher strength, uh, stronger than glass, and they have a high resistance to uh, thermal shock. The next material is graphite. Graphite is a form of carbon with high content of a crystalline carbon in the form of layer. So remember, this uh, graphite, we have uh, layers, and in the layers, we have a different uh, type of bond. If this is one, you know, two layers, we have um, carbon in this layer, and the carbon have in um, here, all of them, they have one type of bond, which is a covalent and a strong. But when we uh, compare the bond between these two layers, uh, the type of bond is van der Waal, and it is weak. And the 
this structure, you know, the layer structure makes the graphite property an abstract. When it is powder, it's a you no know, lubricant, um, and it's a frictional property. Uh, it's going to be low. Remember, when it is exposed to air and moisture, right? When it is exposed to air and moisture, it has a low frictional property. But if it is in vacuum, graphite is going to be very abrasive. And it will be poor lubricant. And also, we have amorphous graphite known as a lamps black, black suit, which is uh, used as a pigment, you know, for uh, coloring. And graphite has a high um, electrical and thermal conductivity and good resistance to thermal shock and uh, high temperature. Next material is diamond. In the diamond, we have carbon with cube, cubic as a crystalline structure, and the uh, covalent bond is the type of bonding we have in this uh, material. Remember, um, the graphite had only um, a covalent bond in the layer. Between the layer, we had a van der Waals, van der Waals uh, uh, bond. So because we, are, we have a covalent bond, in the diamond, it's a very hard material. Uh, it's called, it's uh, known as the hardest uh, material on the earth, and it's. But the pro the problem with this diamond is that it's brittle, and it began to decompose in air at around you know 700 degrees Celsius. But if you uh, how I keep the you know, uh, diamond in non-oxidizing you know environment um, it can resist you know the, the decomposing uh, it has a lot of applications some of them are for example the uh, cutting tool grinding wheel and recently in 1955 uh, they were able to make uh, the diamond uh, synthetically and the way they produced diamond was that um, they subject the graphite. This graphite was the raw material. Uh, they subjected, you know, the graphite to hydrostatic pressure, 14 gigapascal, at the temperature of you know 3,000 degrees Celsius. In that, you know, the condition you can produce a diamond. A diamond has a lot of, you know. Um, application because of its favorable you know, characteristics uh, some of them are a cutting tool um, or another you know one application is uh, using diamond for the dye um, to make an you know, wire so you see the wires become smaller and smaller as it goes through these you know different uh, dyes so the smallest one is um, 0.06 millimeter in diameter, so it can make you know wire uh, with that you know um, small diameter. It also has a application in dressing of a grinding wheel, as well as you know um, coating for the cutting tool. If you have any question about this um, lecture, please uh, contact me. Uh, my email address is uh, here as well as uh, my office number. Also, you can contact me through my cell phone number that I provided in the email address.